mercy and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, your brothers and sisters in Christ, Merry Christmas. Our basis for our sermon today is from our gospel lesson from Luke chapter 2. Don't be afraid. That is what the angel said as he appeared to the shepherds in the field that night. Of course, if you're sitting out in the middle of a dark field, and no city lights or anything like that, and all of a sudden, boom, there's an angel. In the glory of God, you're going to be trembling. He tells them, fear not. What are you afraid of? What brings fear to your hearts? Terrors? The government? Sports? Your spouse? Work? Does your health cause you alarm? Are you concerned about your finances? And how you're going to pay the bill for Christmas. Or more likely, everything else you should have been paying for instead of Christmas. Are you afraid of your sins? And you're standing before God, your maker. Whatever you are afraid of, the angel's message still rings true to you today. While you may not be afraid of seeing the angel, because you don't see the angel, there are things that disturb our hearts. In the words of the angel, don't be afraid, are still valid to this day. Why? I bring you good news of great joy for all people. Not just some people or special people, but all people everywhere. This good news, this gospel is for you who hear. A good news that brings great joy. And if you are burdened by anything, this should bring great joy to your hearts. Today, a great word today. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born, who is Christ the Lord. Today, and the author of Hebrews writes, today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts like it did in the wilderness. But believe that the good news be open. Humble yourself before God and receive his blessing. In the town of David, he's finally come. He's in, you know, he's the seed of David, that promised seed that we've been hearing about throughout Advent. That one who would sit upon David's throne forever, who would rule the nations, who would bring salvation to the Israelites and to the Gentiles, that he would be a light unto them. In the town of David, Bethlehem. How an appropriate place. You know, Bethlehem means house of bread. And why is that appropriate? Because there in the house of bread, there baked and finally delivered on Christmas night is the bread of life. The one who gives his life to the world. His very body and blood is our life. He is the Lord. Besides being David's descendant, he is 
The Lord, the seed of the virgin, conceived by the Holy Spirit. You know, probably get this if you read Beck's translation or an American translation of the Bible. You know, right, there, right there in Genesis, when, when Eve gives birth to her firstborn, she goes, I have given birth to a man, the Lord. Now, most translations put with the help of the Lord, but I don't know where they get that from. Because the Hebrew says, I've given birth to a man of the Lord. She was wrong, but her faith was right. She understood exactly what God said when he cursed the serpent and said, the seed of the woman would crush the head of the serpent. But it wasn't Cain, and she wasn't the virgin. It would be Mary. And her seed formed into a man, receiving the person, the, the Son of God. And so he is God incarnate, God taking on our flesh, joining himself to humanity, becoming one of us, becoming our brother. So that in his flesh, he could redeem us from our sins. That in his flesh, he could receive the penalty that we all deserve for our sin, which is death. And indeed, on the cross, he died our death. But then he rose from the dead on the third day. And as such, he conquered death. Death no longer has any hold of him. Can no longer touch him. And he frees us now from the fear of death. So that Jesus can say that he who believes in me, though he dies, shall live, and he who believes in me shall never die. That whoever believes in me has eternal life right now as a present possession. That he has given us his life and it dwells in us. And so we need not fear death. By his death on the cross, he has freed us from the bondage of sin. It can't order us around any longer. They can tempt us. They can try to press our buttons. But we don't have to listen to it anymore. Christ, our Lord, is our master now. The flesh still rails and fights against the Holy Spirit who dwells us and gives us the very life of Christ. But we don't have to listen to it anymore. He is Christ. That is the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Prophet, Priest, and King, the Lord. That is the Lord. All those lords in the Old Testament. He's that Lord come to us to free us. And so the angels sing, you know, the whole heavenly host appeared in God's glory. Imagine it's bad enough, there's just one angel, but then boom, you know, thousands upon thousands of angels in the glory of God singing the song that we join in every Sunday. Glory to God in the highest. And I'm quite certain you're after always looking for the Christmas star. You know, it's like, you're not going to find it. It was a miracle. The Magi and Easter were always watching the skies. They, they saw it from afar. The glory of the Lord. They, they, they thought it was a star. So bright it was there in the sky. And he went away. And he said, we got to go find out what happened over there. We'll get to that on January 6th. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men. On whom his favor rests. Peace on earth. Goodwill toward men. Yes, that is what this Jesus was born to bring about peace on earth. 
We have some a hard time seeing it out there. Like, you know, we're still in Afghanistan. We're still in Iraq. We're still in Germany and Japan. Our armies. Where is this peace on earth? What kind of peace is he bringing to us now? The best kind of peace. The peace beyond all understanding that's ours in Christ Jesus. This peace which is God the Father, no longer counting our trespasses against us. He has reconciled himself to us. He's done that. He's reached out to us with his son Jesus and says, I forgive you your sins and remember them no more. That we can stand boldly in the blood of Christ and in his name and come before God, our heavenly father, with confidence to bring before him whatever is going on in our lives and be assured that he hears us before we even open our lips, he promises that the answer is on the way. That's the best kind of peace. When you have peace with God. And if you have peace with God, then you can begin to have peace with one another. Because that peace which he has given you as he has taken away your sins, as he has no longer counted your trespasses against you. We are to take that peace which we have from God and extend it to the people in our lives. As they sin against us, as they step on our toes, as they take advantage of us, as they are sometimes unruly, And horrible people. And you couldn't believe that they could ever do such a thing to you. And yet, our Father in Heaven goes, I can't believe you would do such a thing to me. But I have forgiven your sins for Christ's sake. I have removed your trespasses before, against you. For Christ's sake, I have reconciled myself to you. For Christ's sake, go do the same. And there are those who trespass against you, who sin against you, who hurt you, who step on your toes, who steal from you, who physically hurt you and abuse you, to people who stab you in the back. They hurt your feelings. Whatever it is that makes you disturbed, and they're around. That same peace which God gives to us, he calls us to give to those who sin against us, who hurt us. It's not our forgiveness that we're giving them. So you can't say it's a hard thing to forgive. Well, I'm not asking you. I'm asking you to extend to them the peace of Christ. That same peace, that same forgiveness, that same love that God has given to you in Christ Jesus you give to them for the sake of Christ Jesus, too. It's yours to give. And if you give it away, don't worry, there's more to come. You can't sin so much that God's, that Christ Jesus' blood cannot cover it. But that is why he came into the world. That is why he was born in the flesh. And become one of us. So that by his blood, he may bring us peace. Peace with him and peace with our fellow man. This is how much God loves us, John writes. Not that we loved him, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. That's the great love that we have here today. It's not the Hallmark Channel Christmas love. It's not even a Christmas carol love. It is the love of God shown to us in Christ Jesus. It is the love of God that sacrifices himself 
for our sake, who sacrifices his rights to retribution and revenge of wrath towards you for the things that you have done and the things that you have said and, yes, the things you thought about doing. And that love that he has shown to you, that's the Christmas love God wants you to show people today and tomorrow on Christmas Day and for the next 12 days of Christmas. Remember, 12 days on Christmas weren't the 12 days marching up to this day. It's the 12 days following all the way to January 5th. I don't know why the, the stores haven't capitalized. You get 12 more days of sales. Reaching into the new year, you can hit the new year already in the black. If they just recognize the blood of Christ and what he's done for them. No, that love which God has shown for you and wants you to carry out throughout the whole year is a love that recognizes Christ died for you and he also died for this person who is your enemy. This person who has hurt you. This person you don't like. It's the sacrifice, take that love that God has shown you and sacrifice your rights to retribution. To sacrifice your rights to revenge. To sacrifice your rights to wrath. And instead, to forgive them also for Christ's sake. To pour upon them the blood of Christ that has been poured upon you. To show them that great love that God has shown for you in Christ. And there we'll have peace. A peace no army, no navy, no air force, not even the Marines can ever bring about. You see, they had the war, and the war to end our wars in Korea, <laughs> Vietnam, other wars all over the world, and I'll keep on going on until Christ comes again in his second advent. And there he will take out all that is evil in the world, change us, remove all the wickedness that is in us, and form us to his very own image, to be like him in every way. That is the peace and the love of Christ of Christmas. Amen. May the peace of God beyond all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.